guys and welcome back to the podcast. Today we're going to discuss balance training and why should you be balance training at the moment or why is balance training important? Now before I jump into the podcast I wanted to discuss my new programs that are going to be coming out so I have a couple of new tolerance programs that I'm putting out in the next couple of weeks and it's going to be based around you'll have an ankle and knee program we're going to have a hamstring program and then we're going to have a shoulder program and the goal of the program is to reduce risk of injury um in those areas through building tolerance and building improving balance improving control around those areas okay so they're going to be out in the next couple of weeks keep an eye on instagram because that's going to be how i'm going to promote it through or that's what i'm going to promote it through and then i'm also going to stick it up on tiktok and i might pop it up on, on linkedin as well and if anyone has any questions on those make sure to, to get on to me on top of that then i also have a foundational mobility program at the moment it's a six-week mobility program it's uh for all levels so it has beginner intermediate and advanced or i should say beginner slash intermediate and advanced exercises so once you get through the first six weeks of the beginner ones you can actually progress on them and do the advanced exercises right after that if you want to so that's basically all i have program wise at the moment and then on top of that i'm also taking more cons- consultations so working one-to-one to people so injury rehab or um, mobility based consultations if anyone is looking to that, looking for that, get in contact with me through Instagram or send me an email at the mobility shooter or mobility shooter at gmail.com. Leave out the so mobility shooter at gmail.com. And basically what we do in those consultations is we go through very similar to a physio consult in terms of all the history taken in that. And I'll have you fill out a, a form before we go into it just so we can speed up the process a small bit. And then we'll be able to provide you with with uh, exercises and, and videos to improve recovery or improve your um improve outcome okay so obviously the goal of that is to get people back to playing sport or get back to activity if you've been out of it for a long time and really i deal mostly with like i deal with acute injuries but i deal with people who've had injuries for a long time like back pain shoulder pain hip pain knee pain and they want to get rid of that so if you have, if you fall under that category and if you're interested in that definitely get in contact with me and we can we can discuss different options so before this is going to be a short podcast now because i just want to talk about balance training itself why it's important when you should be doing it why or how you should be doing it and give you kind of an overview of of, of why it needs to be included in programs so it's often missed in programs as well so like a common problem you'll see people who have poor balance or poor coordination are at a higher risk of injury and it could be injury in something as small as just turning your ankle when you're walking on the road or it could be hurting a knee or hurting a hip um, as you as you if you're playing sport okay so it's important to improve your coordination overall to improve performance obviously because if you have poor balance co- poor coordination you're going to it's going to reduce your performance that could be on field um or if you're if you're going for a run let's say so if the body's uncoordinated if if, if it's not used of working itself if it's not used of um controlling itself you're going to be at a higher risk and then as you get older your that that risk is going to increase so you're obviously at risk of osteoporosis as you get older the bone the bones aren't as strong but then to reduce uh your risk of actually breaking a bone and that as you age you need to think about what's causing that and a lot of the time it's balance and tripping up over something or, or falling off something or falling just just um falling on or slipping on the carpet or something like that uh, and then falling down a lot of the time that's how older people get injured it's something as simple as that and it could be to do with you know it, there's a lot of things involved like polypharmacy where they're on there were people are taking a lot of drugs and it's affecting their overall uh cognitive performance or, or cognitive ability and then because of that then they're not actually able to balance properly or they're feeling faint or they're feeling like they're they're going to stumble or fall over they might get vertical because of that and it could just be because they haven't trained certain movements in a while or they haven't used certain movements in a while so when they get into that position their uh, body isn't used to it and it, you'll fall over so really important to take the time to practice balance training and especially more so as you age so right now it's good for sports it's good for performance then as you age it's good for for healthy living and making sure for health and well-being i should see should say and even it's even important for mental well-being as well because having the confidence knowing that you are comfortable in different positions that you know that you are able to handle certain positions and that you're not going to fall over it's going to give people a lot of peace of mind especially as you age okay and you might take that for granted now but when you're 70 80 90 years old that is not something you could take for granted as much and you don't move around as much and that can affect your health and well-being and your mental health because you won't want to move as much anymore because you won't be confident in doing it so 
what is balance training or why is it important? So that's a lot of the kind of that they're the they're a lot of the main ones that I've what I've touched on there in terms of now it's important for improving performance and reducing injury risk and in sports it it improves your efficiency uh, of different movements that you go through. And then when you get older it's reducing your risk of falling, it's reducing your risk of, of getting injured from from a fall or getting injured from being in an, uh, an awkward position. And your body is better coordinated as well. So you'll feel better in yourself and you'll be more confident to do a lot more activities or try out new things. Because as we get older, we do reduce a lot of the stuff we do, which is going to affect our mobility overall. Uh, we reduce our activities and there's a lot of reasons for that. But if we can if we can keep our activity levels high and we can keep challenging the body and keep, keep challenging yourself, then the body will adapt always and it'll get stronger and it'll get better. And it, it, the body will get better no matter what age you are. It's going to get better at different things. Obviously, you're going to, the, the aging process is going to affect certain certain uh, abilities. But if you train those abilities, you can improve them in nearly every circumstance. Now, what is balance training itself? So balance training, what you're doing is you're trying to improve postural control. And Postural control, I talked a small bit about in the podcast before this, but postural control is, if you're looking for the actual definition, it's a complex CNS function, so complex, complex central nervous system function for detecting sensory stimuli, interpreting information, and responding appropriately in order to maintain an upright position. So postural control is how your body organizes itself in different situations. And that could be when you're running, it could be when you're jumping, when you're landing, it could be if you're, when you're going down to pick something up. So it's keeping your center balance right so that you don't fall over and to do that it requires so much input so it's not just something that we can do off the bat your body needs to take into account uh needs to look at your vestibular system your visual system your sensor somatosensory system so your vestibular system and i've talked about it in other podcasts your vestibular is like these crystals in your inner ear and they're basically your a balance system in your inner ear so people that have vertigo a lot of time one of these uh, one of these crystals has dislodged and went into one of the posterior canals or one of the canals in the back of your ear. Basically, it sits in a gel-like like substance. When you move your head, it when you move your head around, then it um, it it, it kind of tells your brain where your body is or where you're positioned because of how the crystals are sitting in the fluid. Okay, are sitting in that kind of jelly-like substance. So when you shake your head or if you spin around, you're going to get dizzy. Um, that's a lot of the time because these crystals are having so much information or they're sending so much information very similar to um, vertigo uh, that you're going to get dizzy and you're going to get faint okay so that is your vestibular system your visual system is obviously your eyes and your eyes are so important in balance training and are so important in keeping your balance in general and reducing injury risk and anyone that has worked with me one-to-one clients especially in sports if you're coming back from injury and knee injury or ankle or hip or anything literally any type of injury at all i always work on balance through reducing visual input okay so by making them either partially close their eyes or fully close their eyes and getting them to go through different movements and different positions with in that with that with that lack of uh, visual input so by cutting that off the uh, body is going to find it a lot harder to organize itself and if you're in a position right now if you're not listening to this let's say in a car because we'll see a lot of people do if you're at home and you're listening to this one thing I want you to try right now is standing on one leg. So just lift, stand on one leg, lift the other leg up. And I want you to stand there. Keep your eyes open, put your hands in your hips and see if you can last for 15 to 20 seconds. If you can, that's excellent. What I want you to do next time is I want you to stand on one leg, hands in your hips, keep the leg in the same position. And this time I want you to close your eyes and I want to see how long you can last before you fall. So when you do that, because your visual system or your, 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 yeah, because your visual system isn't picking up all this information and you don't know where or you don't know where the ground is, you don't know your depth perception is affected, you don't know where anything is in front of you, if there's anything coming at your head. Because of all that, uh, because of the fact that you lose that, then your balance, your brain has to work a lot harder with your vestibular and your somatosensory, which I'm going to talk about in a second, to pick up on different stimuli to make sure that you can, as we said, maintain an upright position. So it needs to detect different sensory stimuli. It needs to interpret information. If you cut off one of its main channels of information, you can see how much harder it's going to be to actually um, to maintain your balance and to hold hold your position. Now, your somatosensory system, which is another thing involved in balance, is going to be anything that involves touch, 
pressure, let's say pain, temperature, position, movements, vibration. That's your somatosensory system. So your somatosensory cortex in the brain is going to take all that information and it's going to interpret that information. Okay, and it, it, it's going to use that. And to test your somatosensory system then, what we can do is if you like, let's say, if you're if you're balance training on sand, something that's an unstable surface, or if you're balance training on like a, a cushion, that throws off your somatosensory system because it's not a firm ground anymore, okay? And it's going to change it up so much. So when you know what the somatosensory cortex does and what it, type of information it interprets, what you're doing then is you're trying to cut out these different things to see if you can test the balance. And then because you've looked at that, because you're looking at postural control and you've you kind of have a better idea, you have a better understanding of what contributes to to holding good posture or holding a posture, it doesn't have to be what they consider good posture, but holding a posture, now you can see what you can do to actually improve it. So let's say strength training, you have to lift stuff progressively heavier and you have to obviously you can take your rest times, you know all that. But with this one, you need to think about how you can test your balance by affecting either of these sensory systems and in what way can you do it and there's loads of ways you can do it obviously you have time you've taken into account you have to take into account uh, like load you have to take into account um, like did you get rid of your vis visual system completely by closing your eyes or do you get to blink or lots of different things like that but I'll go on to that as we go through the podcast now so how can you train your balance what can you do to improve your balance overall and what can you do to improve your postural control if we're talking about balance we want to talk about postural control because a, that's what you're that's what you're aiming to or that's what you're achieve, aiming to achieve is to improve your postural control because your balance is um or, or i should say your postural control is your whole body moving together and holding an upright position while you're doing that now first thing before i go through any of these if you're playing sport or at any age if you're looking to improve your balance it has to be similar it has to be dynamic but it has to be similar to what you're going to be doing in a real game so just standing on one leg and closing your eyes won't will work to a certain extent of improving it to a very base level but when you're talking about a game a uh, situation if you're playing if you're playing let's say football or hurling or something like that or rugby or anything you need to see how you can adapt it and change your balance or test your balance in situations that would be similar to that game so then it comes back to like cutting jumping landing um landing and sticking something landing and, and pushing off different things like that accelerating to decelerating um, even doing like uh, like a spin move or anything like that. All of those have to be taken into account because if you don't train those specific positions and specific movements, you're going to find it really difficult to actually improve in them. So make it as similar or as realistic as possible to get uh, to 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 achieve better balance or to improve your balance. Now, what can you do at home just on a base level right now? You're sitting at home and you're wondering how you how you can improve it. So there's loads of things you can do, um, but as I said above, is you're looking to test those different uh, sensory systems, and you're looking to challenge those in different ways. And I should go on and say that you'll never improve your balance unless you go to the edge of your balance where you're actually falling, because if your body doesn't need to prioritize balance, it won't need to improve it. So it doesn't need to to um, it doesn't need to spend more time like fixing a certain issue. Okay, because if it doesn't prioritize it, if you don't go to the edge of your balance, you never fall over, or you never um, you're never a threat of falling over so the body never needs to actually improve that so just standing on one leg for five seconds isn't going to improve your balance standing on one leg for 30 to 40 seconds it's going to test it a small bit more but it's going to test it and you're going to get better at standing on one leg okay so that's why we need to transfer it across everything that we're doing so start at home with using like a cushion on the ground now obviously make sure it's not slip but start at home either using a cushion on the ground or you could start practicing in sand or practicing on a bosu ball and it could just be throwing a ball off a wall and catching it again uh, where you are actually getting tested there okay and it could be like you can get very very um uh, very very specific in this or you can get really a uh, progressive or really adventurous in this and you can try out different things and you can see that in some of the skiers i definitely put you onto there's a, a skier i'll have to get his name uh, I don't know exactly off the top of my head, but he has all these crazy uh, little gadgets that he uses for balance where he's jumping from one thing to the next. But I'm sure if you look up skier balance training, it'll, it'll be the first one to come up because it was all over social media a couple of years ago. And he just uses different things, jumping, landing different um, on different surfaces and how he has to 
control like he jumps maybe he might land on a ball he used to control the movement of the ball across the room as well that's very uh high level stuff so for him because he's an olympic skier now you can take some of those things and put it back in and put them into your own training but i would say firstly don't increase your risk of injury trying to reduce your risk of injury so don't actually do something that you're not going to be able to do and then you end up spraining an ankle doing it okay because then it's just going to set you back and as i've talked about in podcasts before this one where i talk about uh preventing injuries if when you do injure an area it's going to be at more risk of predisposed to injuring it again because the connectivity in the brain changes a small bit and it's not as um it doesn't have as much control over that area anymore until you train it back to that again so you don't want to injure yourself and then be set back weeks and weeks and weeks trying to get back to where you are so starting on like a bosu using a bosu ball yeah going through sand on a cushion would be really important like are good ways of doing it on top of that you can think about as i said closing your eyes is another excellent way of doing it um single leg and double leg balance practicing movements that you're going to be using in a game extremely important so like jumping hopping triple jumps you could do lateral hops as one i always do with people and um, with their eyes closed things like that will all help and it will all improve your postural control and that's what we're looking to do and then you're looking to reduce your senses so you're looking to reduce sight you're looking to reduce your your sense of touch um you might change it up so that you have to focus on your dual tasking and you're doing two things at once so let's say as i said throwing a ball off a wall while standing on one leg or standing on a bosu ball and, and trying to juggle things like that i've seen a lot of hurlers actually um i even seen a couple of uh limerick hurlers doing that a year or two ago um where they were one of them was on a ball standing on one leg and he was juggling at the same time uh, and obviously he's working on postural control with that so reduce your senses and then add more tasks that's going to test it because the brain has to use more areas to do that it has to use more um regions of the brain i suppose to to help coordinate that and your cere- cerebellum at the back of your brain is going to coordinate stuff and it's going to be involved in coordination so that's kind of the area that you're working on is how that works well with other parts of the brain so your motor cortex and your somatic sensory system and that and then lastly make it dynamic so you're you're changing your positions a good bit and then make it fun as well so that you're actually enjoying what you're doing when you're doing it um, because if you're enjoying it, you'll pick up on it a lot faster and your body will improve it a lot faster as opposed to if you're just grueling through a session. So it's really important to actually enjoy it as well. So I uh, enjoy it. And I should say, as I said right at the start of this, you need to test it. If it's not testing it, if you're not nearly falling over, the body won't prioritize that to improve it. So that's another one. So just look at that. So why should we train balance? What's the reason? You're looking to improve posture and control. You're looking to reduce your risk of injury. And you're looking to improve your performance overall because of the fact that if you improve your balance in certain positions, it will improve your efficiency of like or your sports movements. So different like cuts and landings, um, spins, stuff like that. It's going to improve that overall. But on top of that, as you get older, your balance reduces because you don't go through as many activities or your balance gets affected because you, you're not um, testing it as much. So it's important because or as we age to... Uh, make sure that we're working on balance and it's something you can maybe include with your parents as well that you actually get them to start working on balance exercises so that as they get older they're not as high risk for fall because people that are fallers when you come into physio what you're going to be doing or what they'll be doing a lot of the time is actually just balance training um and then and movement training as well so that's kind of everything i wanted to discuss oh, just before i jump off of be conscious about what you're doing so first be sensible don't do anything silly that you're going to injure yourself more be conscious about what you're doing and what you're trying to train. So if you're jumping and landing, be conscious that you're trying to control your landing. If you're jumping over and back, be conscious that your foot placement is is, is touching the ground. I'm, I'm not telling you to think about everything you're doing and don't be so structured in it because the body will figure that out itself. Just be consciously aware of what you're doing at times. So you're jumping over and back or you're landing. If your eyes are closed, you're getting a feel for your body. You're starting to feel out different positions and you're, you're figuring out what happens when you put yourself in certain positions. So don't just be reactive. Be conscious about it and um, try to control it a bit more. And then in line with control, I would say control your breathing as well because your breathing is going to be a nice little focal point that you can do as well that you can focus on when you're balanced training and it's, it's going to have an effect on you training as well because if you're breathing really fast, you're going to be in a stressed state and it's going to be harder to control your balance. But if you can control that breathing, slow it down, um, use it right so that in certain positions you might need to use an inhale, certain ones you might use an exhale. That's all going to be important and it's going to improve your ability in the long term. 
are short term and long term. So think about, be conscious of it and control it as well. Now guys, that's everything I wanted to discuss today. Um, short enough podcast. I didn't want to go into massive detail on, on any of these. Hopefully now you've got some takeaways from that about how the brain works and what's involved in balance and what it has to interpret, different information that it has to interpret and what it has to detect. And then how you can train it at home as well and what you can do like by actually reducing these sensory systems and testing it and dual tasking, how you can actually improve that overall, uh, improve your balance overall, improve performance overall. Because and improve your mobility overall as well I suppose I should say because that's what the that's what the goal is you're trying to always better yourself um, and you should be as you're getting older you should be always trying to better yourself and improve and progress and this is just another this is just another thing to add to your arsenal about what you can include in your training session and it's enjoyable as well at times but balance training is actually enjoyable to do uh, you're not going to get a six pack from it you're not going to have massive pecs or you're not going to have a, a, a big arse from doing it but well, you might get a small bit of glute gains from single leg standing, but it's not going to be the most visually uh, appealing thing for other people if that's what you're into. But for yourself, you're going to be a lot more confident in yourself. You're going to pick up skills faster because you'll have better control and you'll have better ability. Um, and then in the long term, you're going to reduce your risk of uh, injury and reduce your risk of falling. So it, do, it is important. I hope that makes it sound a bit more important than it is, cause, but it is really important because you can have poor balance now, but when you're older is when you're going to pay for that really okay and i don't mean to end on that type of a note but hopefully guys you picked up something from this um and if anyone has any questions get in contact with me through instagram or send me an email i'd love as well if you could share this on your story on instagram it's the best way of, of getting it out there or even send it to a friend who you think would be interested in this you might you might show it to your your parents or something like that who will have a who might have an interest in in longevity because that's really important for longevity so i'd love guys as i said sharing your story um and 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 send it to a friend also i would love if you could rate it if you're listening to this on itunes it goes a long way and leave a comment it really really goes a long way in improving the the ranking of the podcast and getting it out to more people um i hope i've provided you some bit of value uh, in terms of, of or, or some takeaway what you, what you can take away from this uh, podcast and that you'll actually have a better understanding of how the body works but that's everything for me guys hope everyone's doing well out there and uh have a good one